Welcome back everyone to another LibGDX development tutorial. So in today's video, we'll be talking about the skin object. So in the previous video, we didn't really explain the object that we create for our scene, and that is the skin object. We can see it here, but we can see it takes in a parameter, which is an internal path towards a myskin.json. So what is a skin object? A skin is another way to define a texture for your UI. But we'll talk more about it in this video. But if you're curious about creating your own UI, check out the video up on top. So if we middle mouse button click on the skin object, we can see it brings us to, to the first constructor. And one of the parameters is a skin file. So as you can see, I defined a internal path to a JSON, which is myskin.json. You can define other types of files, like you can include a atlas path or an atlas that has been already loaded in your application. Uh, you can even just include an atlas. A JSON file for the skin object has defined of buttons, class types, which is the style of the component. For example, if we middle mouse button click on the button, we can see that the constructor takes in a button style. And these are what you're going to be defining in the JSON file. Now, libgdx does have a tool called the Skin Composer, which is a application that is used to make custom skins for your UI. So heading over to the first link in the description will bring you over to the Skin Composer for libgdx. As you can see, it's by Ray3k. Um, he also has a video going over about the Skin Composer if you want to check that out. So what we're going to do, we're going to go down here, we're going to click on download. And this right here will bring us to the GitHub page of where you can be able to download the application for your device. Um, you can download as a standalone jar, which that's what I'm gonna do. All right, once the jar file has been successfully downloaded, you can click open and it will bring you to this page right here. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and create our button style. So we're going to define two states just to make things simple. We're going to do the up state and the down state. Feel free to define whatever state that fits your application. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to this little image icon and we're going to create our drawable. So the type of drawable that we want is going to be a nine patch and we can do so by going to the top left where it says add, create new nine patch. And then we're going to load in our image I'm going to click the button and then this right here is going to make a quick preview of your button on what it's going to look like in your scene. So first we have the padding. Uh, make sure that you define the padding around the bounce. And second we have the content which is the space that's in between your button but since we're just creating a generic button and not a text button and then we're going to stretch this out just to make sure that everything looks correct. As you can see, it shows a quick preview. And then click Save. And then select the button. Now, as you can see, we have the button right here. I'm actually going to make this dark so we can see a little bit more. All right, then next we're going to define the down state. And we're going to do the exact same thing add, create new nine patch, load image, and then button underscore down. And then since the button is down, we're going to have to move the uh, padding towards the edge again. And same for the content stretch in the preview. And there it is. Click Save. And then select the button that we want. And as you can see, the button does have two states. Um, I'm going to make it large so you guys can see. Right now, the button does look pretty stretched because since it's pixels and it's not using linear, uh, we are going to config that in the Atlas file later. So to uh, export our style to a JSON, we want to click on file at the top left, export, and then hit browse, and then choose the directory where you want it to be exported at. And then given the name, we'll call this button style.json since it only contains just a button style, and then click save, and then export. So let's make a quick change to the button style.atlas. 
and this is the texture filter. Right now it is set to linear linear. This is why our UI looked to kind of stretch. So we're gonna change this to be uh, nearest nearest, but you can just delete it. By default, it will use it. All right, back to the scene UI class. We're gonna to go to the top. We're gonna to do private uh, skin, skin. And then we're gonna go down to the create method. We're gonna initialize the skin. We're gonna do skin equals new skin. And then inside the parameters, inside the constructor, we're gonna do gdx.files.internal. And then inside the parameters of the internal, we're gonna do the uh, button style.json, which is we're gonna copy this paste it in here. All right, so this right here will load the button style for our button. And then back to the button right here, we're gonna do the skin. So we can pass the skin object as a parameter, um, but right here, uh, this works for only one button tab because if we have multiple button types, like say we had default and another one was like button two right down here, what we can do, we can do Instead of passing the skin object, we can do skin dot get, and then we do the name of the button. There we go. All right, and this right here will actually load the name of it. But technically, you don't need to do that. That's just for clarity. And then you can just pass it in like this. All right, when you run the game or your application, it should look like this. We should see a start button, and then if you click on it, you see the animation of it moving. That wraps up everything for today in this video about the skin object. I learned, hope you learned something new more about it, as well as consider uh, learning more about it in the LibGDX uh, repositories, which I'll have a link in the description, as there is much to learn about this object and you can do a lot of things with it to manage your resource for your UI scene. Have a good day, everyone.